You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. To list publicly, you do need access to your project so that you could be working actively on it or else you'd be considering a holding entity and the exchange would not want us to be a holding entity that's the reason why. So what we're doing right now as we speak today, we're navigating the last few meetings, hopefully complete here in the next two months or, or possibly sooner, uh, to get towards access with Sombrero, the big flagship. And the only thing I want to point out to everyone listening who's waiting for this to come to market, I know it's missing a value in your portfolio, but the wait is more than worth it. Welcome back to Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. And in today's episode, we'll be hearing from Ivan Bevic. He is the CEO of Copernico Metals. Website is copernicometals.com. And this was a spin-out company formerly called Sombrero Resources after Oren acquired East Main. One of the spin-out companies was Sombrero Resources, which is now Copernico. Just by way of reminder, I'm a shareholder. Uh, the company is a reporting issuer. However, the shares are not traded for reasons that we're going to talk about today. Ivan, welcome back onto the show. Uh, the junior mining markets, uh, kind of the worst sentiment I've seen since I've been doing this. Give us a little bit of your historical perspective and what are the steps you're making with Copernico to become relisted again? Sure. Well, look, it's, it's great to be here. Uh, we're getting really close to, to getting across this long anticipated finish line, which we'll talk about in a moment. But the markets have been absolutely decimated on the junior resource side, as, as we've all seen. The last six months out of 24 years of doing this were the worst six months I've seen. And I came in post Brex, saw that market, saw the, the mining stocks cheaper than anything during the dot-com boom that happened in 2000. And then I also went through the two, 2008 correction with the mortgage collapse. And so I've seen some pretty good waves. I know people have seen more than I have. And I've stopped trying to figure out the uncharted territory of macroeconomic wizardry of what's going to happen because a lot of really important fundamentals that are very strong for metals are not having impact on metal prices or on equity prices. And, and you hear the terms, we're in a risk-off environment. There's a lot of fear and concern because of other markets and other events globally. And we are to a certain point, Bill. So what I've really done to find my optimism to drive ahead with our teams and our projects I focus on the production cliffs because these are a lot more prevalent towards a better market for us than macroeconomic pictures, which we can talk about in a moment. And what I mean by that is if you look at copper, if you look at gold or silver, you're seeing a significant divergent between supply and demand for metals that really kicks into gear in about a year to year and a half from now going into 2024, 2025. And the good news there is it's in front of us, not behind us. But, you know, the hardest thing to do right now is to find metal. And uh, we've talked to several companies that are now making investments into juniors across our other companies, or they've signed confidentiality agreements with the hope to make investments. Um, we're seeing metal shortages or potential metal shortages. Lack of discovery is a major problem industry-wide. We've been in a, in a deficit or in a, in a bear market for a decade with some, some very short windows of of joy. And in that market, we've lost geologists, we've lost entrepreneurs, we've lost people that make those big discoveries that we're going to need to supply the copper for the electrification of the planet or the gold demand that's continuing to increase with a larger population uh, for all the various reasons why gold's in demand and jewelry and whatnot. So for me, it's, it's extremely encouraging to see that curve in front of us and the gap. And to quantify my statement there, you look at Newmont, they bought Gold Corp or Agnico Eagle merged with Kirkland Lake. Those are lateral moves. And, and you see a lot of these moves in lieu of big ounces being found or added to balance sheets. When a major mining company produces, they have to replace those ounces plus show an increase to show a growth return on their share price to shareholders. And you're not seeing that anymore. You're seeing now the merge. They go from a two and a half million ounce producer a year to five by merging. But that's the challenge. Discovery is a challenge. And that's the real premise of our business. We want to go find something or multiple things that could really change the needle on the world scale and help solve the demand gap that's coming or the supply gap that's coming in the metals we're talking about today. So one of the hurdles to relisting was getting access uh, at Sombrero. Do you have an update for us? Uh, what's going on at Sombrero? 
Sure. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to belabor the intense details, but a couple of things. We've been on this project for about four and a half years and the progress we've made has been significant or else we wouldn't be here chasing this project where it's at. To quantify where it sits today, it's in the four, late in the fourth quarter of a calendar year, if you're thinking about completing. I'm not saying that's when this is going to complete. I'm using it as an analogy or the ninth inning in baseball. We're at the, the final stages of negotiating our access to these projects. Now, impressively, we've been able to really collaborate well with the government through agricultural programs and various social programs that are starting to benefit these communities tremendously. And they have in the last few years, we've taken the long road. We found a way that the communities can benefit probably better than any other community in South America currently for an exploration company. And we're very proud of that, which is why we're, we're really, really bullish and confident that we're going to get through this, this next late stage of negotiations to get access. Um, to list publicly, you do need access to your project so that you could be working actively on it, or else you'd be considering a holding entity and the exchange would not want us to be a holding entity. That's the reason why. So what we're doing right now, as we speak today, we're navigating the last few meetings, hopefully complete here in the next two months or, or possibly sooner uh, to get towards access with Sombrero, the big flagship. And the only thing I want to point out to everyone listening who's waiting for this to come to market, I know it's missing a value in your portfolio, but the wait is more than worth it. And that's towards the scale. You know, I was saying before we got on this interview, a one to three kilometers of strike length, meaning, you know, one or two miles on surface of gold and copper would be exciting. In our first targets at Sombrero, we have 12 kilometers of exciting mineralization that we've identified on surface. And that's just the beginning of Sombrero. That's the magnitude and scale. And it's also where some of the world's largest mines currently are operating and have, have been found in our production. So it's it's a real big prize. And I've met, made a career on trying to get towards these bigger discoveries. All of the companies that I'm involved in have major swings. This is one of the biggest and it's one of the least explored, which gives us so much room to perform in the share price because you get paid for finding it, not for having ounces. And that's what this project really emanates. Now, while we wait, looking at the business plan and, and the mention of acquiring other assets, first of all, we have the Takana district as well. District just means very large land position with multiple opportunities to find big mines. Um, we've looked beyond these two projects. We are buyers in this market. You know, if I was extremely liquid personally, I'd be buying shares in a handful of mining companies that I don't already own if I didn't own the big positions I do. As a CEO, I want to get as many assets as I can in the company you know, within reason before the market picks up. I believe there's going to be a tremendous turn on the backside of this bear market. I believe there'll be a very robust bull market. That's what I've learned through my 24 years of being in this sector. And if we can acquire a few more projects in the near term, that would be a substantial addition for our existing shareholders to benefit from more than one opportunity, whether it be self-financing mechanisms if one works out or multiple ways to pay dividend returns to shareholders on multiple sales. Either way, I'm a major shareholder. I'm the second largest shareholder next to Newmont, who got their share position by buying Gold Corp. And my partners and I, we all treat this company as shareholders. We're extremely anxious to get it listed. We're extremely patient, you know, not by choice. So there's a bit of frustration there. However, we know what's in front of us by opportunity. And we think the market timing is going to really complement us by the time we get back to market. Ivan, as you're looking at new projects, uh, would projects you would consider, would they only allow you to go public? Let's say if Sombrero doesn't work out the way you want, are you looking to acquire a project that would then allow you to immediately relist? So the, the, the scope of every project we looked at is or looking at, it's, it's to do with scale and grade and greed. It has to be big. It has to be really good. It has to kind of rival that, that world-class kind of scale, meaning something that would be bigger than a 5 million ounce gold discovery, you know, something that would make a big copper gold discovery, much like Sombrero. So that's our first metric we're using. But to your point, um, if we acquire a project that has access on it today, we can list within 30 days. We are pre-approved in many ways, and we've done all the preemptive work to get listed. So it could happen very quickly. We don't know how long Sombrero is going to take, although we're in the final stages. We think it could happen 
you know, in the very not too far future. Um, but we don't want to wait a year longer being unlisted. We want to give shareholders the opportunity to trade, but more so we want to buy some of these incredible assets we're finding and put them into the company prior to trading so that we can offer those multiple opportunities to shareholders. Ivan, you've mentioned in previous interviews that the majors understand what you have geologically with Sombrero and they've approached you even to finance you. Uh, can you review with us the treasury and how you're going to top off the treasury during this period of time? Sure. You know, and, and unfortunately, there's a, there's a burn rate in every company that exists. And we've obviously been going through ours. Um, a lot, no shortage of corporate interest because of the scale of what we have at Sombrero. There's quite a few majors that have expressed interest with us. We would entertain an investment from them at the right price, but we're in no rush to give it away at cheaper prices should we have to do a funding in the near term before we get full-time access to the project. Where we sit right now is our capital is good through the end of September. And um, I'm personally willing to, to be the lead order on the next funding we do and backstop the company as long as it takes to get ourselves up and running with multiple projects or to get Sombrero through community access and whatnot. The cost of sustaining ourselves for a longer period of time are, are very small in our financing world across the companies I'm involved in and financings, I've been quite heavily in instrumental in raising capital. We've raised about $65 million in the last 19 months for junior exploration companies. So there's no shortage of ability to raise capital, willing to write a big check myself personally here to lead this market into this project sombrero, as well as potentially another one or two that we'd add to the mix. So no near-term financing concerns, um, we have a long list of investors that would like to participate when we do one. So, you know, for our kids sits right now, we're at the finish line with Sombrero, so we think. And we have some other very appealing projects on deck. And I think there's going to be, or I believe there's going to be a lot of activity between now and September in the company to do with Sombrero and potentially to do with more acquisitions. And on that note, we've started to expand our personnel. We've gotten a, a new investor relations, manager investor relations, Margot Viapando, and we've got a new VP of exploration, Tim Kingsley. We are starting to build out our team in anticipation of listing sometime in the near future with multiple assets to go give those multiple opportunities to shareholders. The website is, again, copernicometals.com. Uh, sign up for the email list. That's the best way to keep track of the company's progress. And Ivan, the next press release we should look for, hopefully out of Sombrero. Would that be correct for investors to look for? Hopefully, yes. Okay, great. All right, I'm a shareholder. Uh, Copernico is also a sponsor of the show. Ivan, thank you for this update. Thank you so much. 